Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Putting Bricks to Work podcast. I have uh, Mo Hayat. He is the co-founder and CTO of Abstract. Hey, Mo. Hello, hello. Thanks so much for having me on. Yeah, yeah. I I'm excited to have you on. I, uh, uh, I've i been following you guys for uh, a couple years. Um, you know, there is uh, a throughput with housing, what we're doing, and also... Um, politics <laughs> mm -hmm. that's what we're going to be talking about here uh um but let's get right into your origin story so tell us more about yourself how you guys formed uh, abstract and what abstract does absolutely so um my origin story doesn't really uh isn't isn't really too complex i mean uh i'm originally from kuwait um was born here raised in kuwait my whole life and came here to study uh at loyola marymount university in los angeles yeah um and um yeah i mean the the minute i started getting into engineering and in my undergrad i was studying electrical engineering i really started to you know have an obsession for it or fondness of looking at things through the lens of systems or making sense of things. And then on top of it, also simplifying it or explaining it to people and how it works because it might benefit them in their lives. So um, I always kind of had that, um, you know, rule set for myself that whatever I was going to head into after graduation, I really wanted to, um, you know, really harp on that educational piece of it. Um, and just the way the universe works, I guess, uh, senior year of, of college, I met, um, I was talking with my friend Patrick, who is now our co-founder and CEO. And uh, he was telling me about a conversation that he had with a, a friend of his about the Green New Deal, which was at the time, a bill at the federal level, uh, written by or introduced by AOC, mm -hmm. um, that, you know, overarchingly, it was a very massive bill, but just talked about uh, investment in renewable energy and kind of slightly beginning to move away from fossil fuels. But when he was talking with his friend about it, the main thing that he learned was his friend was saying that they were trying to ban all aircraft. And that sounded a little, you know, no, it, it doesn't sound too reasonable. So um, Pat actually went to congress.gov, the actual website, and scrolled through the entire bill and read through the entire bill, which for someone used to the UI of Twitter, Instagram, and a lot of like modern day social media or just general information sites that we have, um, going through that was a very, very painful process. Yeah. So uh, the realization that we both came to was, you know, I, I wonder if there's a way we could do that for legislation, just modernize it and use um, whatever tools that are being used in very hot industries that day, like e-commerce and, and, you know, so on to just um, make the ingestion of data stuck to the facts in the legislation very, very easy. And um, we looped in our friend who's now our uh, co-founder and CPO, Matthew. Um, and yeah, we just started building, I guess, after graduation. Um, we've, we've been through a lot for sure. Uh, the funny thing about it is we incorporated... Um, about a couple of weeks before COVID hit in early 2020. Yeah. And, um, you know, having been through that, having been through the, all the SVB nightmare, if anyone's been paying attention to that, um, it's definitely been an interesting time to be a founder, to say the least. But um, so far, we've we've been doing well. So, um, yeah, I could totally dive into a little bit about the the product as well yeah, that we're please. building. So, please. Um, yeah, definitely. So we we are basically building a um, one stop shop for everything related to Gov Affairs, um, initially within the state of California. Yeah. So um, one thing that we noticed was when COVID hit, a lot of the uh, organizations like contract lobbying firms, nonprofits, state agencies, anything along the lines of that, that um their workflows were really impeded by covid and by forcing them to go remote and none of them none of it was actually modernized and when you think about very outdated systems running the the overarching system that decides what's legal and what's not in our life um that was a big concern to us and we were like we should probably you know allocate a couple of resources to fix that so um it just led to a couple of years of long, long iterations, and it gave us, you know, the product that we have right now, which is currently used by about 
I want to say between 50 and 75 different organizations across California to track legislation in California in any way that you'd like. So you could see um, when bills have updates to them, when they're being set for hearing, you can have very specific insights to them. So as of today, we're the only platform uh, across a lot of GovTech companies where um, if you'd like to see, uh, for example, in the 2021-2022 legislative session, which bills that Apple has supported, uh, we're able to pull that up for you. And it just gives you, um, with the same data that you're working with, it just gives you vast new insights or tools to work with it and see it in ways that you haven't been able to see before. Um, and that's kind of the same vision that we're heading on right now. So exciting stuff. Awesome. No, I, I, a couple of thoughts was uh, uh, for us uh, and my partner, Alex, he runs a land use consulting firm in downtown. So during COVID as well, uh, I was like, is there all stop to permitting planning? And we're like, mm -hmm. yeah, they don't, they're trying to figure out uh, how to work Zoom. <laughs> and so mm -hmm. it was back right. in a period where they were doing these meetings over Zoom and uh, mm -hmm. a lot of technical challenges, but you know, it was needed. And I think this, you know, uh, benefit of that was it pushed all the cities to be comfortable with it. And now even, you know, post three years later, they're doing things on Zoom and also in person. So they're starting to, uh, you know, uh, integrate uh, that remote hearing process, if that makes sense. Uh, at the exactly. Yeah. 